Hi hey guys, this is Omer from Immos.com, and I'm going to do a quick first impression to gameplay video for Feria, a free-to-play collectible card game developed and published by a Belgian company called Abracam. Uh, I'll spend about 10 to 15 minutes running around checking this game out, making comments. If you guys want to play uh, Feria or just learn more about it, do check the whole review on Immos.com on the link below. So let's going to start right now. We're going to be playing with our newbie decks. I just started playing this. And it's a collectible card game that originally launched through Kickstarter. Well, it was funded through Kickstarter, and it launched in uh, in February of 2016 as a buy-to-play title and later went free-to-play. It's free-to-play as, as of this video, and it's actually pretty funny because throughout the development process, they actually said in the Kickstarter page that pay-to-win is for scrubs, and the game is not going to sell cards through microtransactions, and they wanted to go with that business model of buy-to-play and get access to cards as you play. And instead, they re they relaunched as a free-to-play game, and I think that makes a lot of sense, because you have games like Hearthstone, Elder Scrolls Legends, and a whole bunch of uh, uh, RuneScape Legends. Uh, you have a whole bunch of collectible card game, MMO-style games coming out already that are free-to-play. It's kind of hard to make this game kind of work as a buy-to-play title, so going free-to-play was the right call, I think. And the game is actually incredibly fun, and I think it'll do quite well. But we're playing against an AI right now for this mission. And by playing against AI, we gain experience, and we get new cards. We can play against other players, too, but we'll do this for now. We get three cards, and you can discard new ones, and you can see their mana cost at the top left. If you're familiar with Hearthstone, the mechanics will come rather quickly to you. Many of these card games are pretty easy to pick up and play, but where Feria really shines, though, is its simplicity to learn, yet immense depth. But let's go ahead and play right now. Uh, I, I guess we will get rid of this guy and this guy and redraw them. Why not? Let's see. So now, this is no good. We don't really need this card. But the cool part about Feria and where the game really stands apart is the fact that you can actually control the board. You actually place lands on the board, and how you place lands actually has a tremendous effect on the game. So this guy, for example, the AI, drops Forest. So now I can actually pick which land I want to drop. These are all my different options, or I can just drop a, a plain land. Basically, plain, you have to summon your cards on land. I have a card that gives me Explorer, it creates a Prairie, and gives me two mana. Mana's over here, we get three per turn. If you control these wells, you get an extra mana every turn. You control them by putting a creature next to them. So we have we have a prairie yak, we can put that guy down. Uh, for now, I'm gonna put two basic lands here. Again, you get two of those per turn. You can actually summon one uh, actual one, one uh, special land or two colorless mana if you're familiar with Magic the Gathering terms. And now that we can we can put our guy over here and summon it over there, and we can end turn. If you also want, you can get bonus uh, mana points instead of placing lands, or you can even draw a card instead of uh, placing any mana, or getting extra mana or placing lands. It's a little complex at first, but once you start playing, you'll pick it up pretty quickly. But you can already tell right away, structures can't move or fight back, so he places a building over here. And he also puts, the, puts a yak down. It's uh, the first creature you summon per turn gains plus one, plus one. That's actually really good. I need to attack that structure. Well, that, that structure's kind of far away. Uh, Death Touch uh, pretty clearly tells you what it does. So on our turn, let's see. We can draw a card. We can get that extra mana. Or we can put two more colorless things down. I can play this guy, right? But in order to play this green uh, Seed Sower, I need one forest. You can see the one below the mana cost as well as six mana. Unspent mana is, a, is accumulated on the bottom left over here. So I, I, have to I have to actually place a forest. And he's got an ability called Gift. When he comes into play, it triggers that ability. Creates an adjacent forest at random. So I can actually... We can make it... But I don't have mana to play him anyway, so I can I can gain mana by doing this, actually. We can do this. So we get that two extra mana. We can place this bad boy. And then we can put this guy down. And everything is gone. And it gives me an extra forest over here. Some cards require more than one forest as well. And it's going to end this turn. We're going to get, we're going to get wrecked by this AI. We'll see. I've only played a handful of games so far, but it's already very clear to me based on the cards I've seen in the tutorial missions and the cards I take a look at in the codex in the game. There's a tremendous amount of depth to Feria. I would actually argue much more so than a game like Hearthstone. Hearthstone, I feel like once you play like a good hundred or so hours and you have a good amount of experience in your belt, you feel with the cards, the amount of depth in the game is it's really controlled by RNG. And once you really get a good grasp of the game, you can have very familiar games. Here, uh, it's I feel like there's a lot more complexity and a lot more skill. And interestingly enough, there's really, they advertise there's, there's no RNG in the game. There was a little bit because we did get a random, well, it's actually adjacent, so it's, I mean, the, the game advertises there's no RNG. And because of that, it's much more skill focused. Or rather, I guess a lot less RNG. Has plus two plus zero when you, while your opponent has 10 life or less. Luckily, this AI starts with uh, low HP, so we can summon this as well. If I move this guy over here, I can actually summon these wherever I want. You just get to summon them adjacent to your current squares. 
And if your enemy enemy's land is next to yours, you can actually move your unit onto the enemy's land and summon more lands next to it as well. So there's a lot of strategy involved in where you place your lands. So for now, we can... Because the more lands we get closer to our enemy, the, the closer we can summon our dudes. The dudes can only move one space per turn, and they can actually attack the, that turn as well after they move. But the first turn you play them, they cannot move. We control both these mana things right now, so we get five per turn. So let's see what we can play. I only have three cards in my hand, and it's not a lot. If I draw a card, I can't place any more mana. So I feel like I'm gonna have to play some uh I'm gonna have to place some more mana this turn. I don't need any more specialty stuff, so we can just place regular mana, regular lands. These lands are purely for placing units down, as well as giving me movement, as well as simply some, you know, again, some cards require certain uh lands on the ground. We'll, we'll, I guess we'll just fight a little bit closer towards him. We'll put this over here. We'll make him put a land there if he wants to attack us. I can place another guy right now, but I, I'm not going to. We'll end that turn. I'm not saying I'm playing perfectly right now, but we, we'll see some more mechanics at work. It's an AI. He's only got 10 HP. I believe we got this. He plays this guy, a random friendly. So there's still some uh, some RNG elements in the game. I guess they're going to argue less RNG elements. But the animations... The, the depth of the game is actually really fun so far. I had a lot of fun doing tutorial missions already. And I, I, I again, I've played the, the RuneScape uh, card game. I've played quite a bit of Hearthstone, a lot of Hearthstone. I've played an incredible amount of Magic the Gathering growing up. I actually bought Pokemon cards recently in real life and played Pokemon too. So I, I've grown up playing a lot of card games. And this actually, is, so far, piques my interest more so than uh, a lot of other card games I've played. Only because it, it feels really crisp, great animations, and the whole placing lands... As well as, or being able to draw a card with getting extra mana. I feel like they got the, they got the, they got a lot of depth in the game, which is, I feel like, what a lot of card games are missing. Let's see. We're gonna go ahead and this is this is kind of rough over here. He's got these dudes over here. He's only got 10 HP, so we can we'll be all right. We can place our Death Touch guy. Instantly destroys any creature damaged by this creature. So if he hits me, uh, my guy does damage back as well. So I can I can kill that three five by placing it over here. So I guess we have to do that. We can summon a few more guys, too. This guy will be a 6. This is not bad, either. We can place this right here. We might save our Death Touch for later. And can we do anything else? We can actually... We have 5 mana still. I'm going to go and put this down over here. We can go and control this as well this way. We'll put both of these down. And we'll summon the War Yak over there. And because he's next to this, we're going to get that extra mana per turn. Uh, luckily, the AI hasn't even been going for these. He's got, like... He gets so few mana. So we should be okay. Sick attack, bro. Oh my god, that buffed this guy quite a bit, though. He's a 5-3 now. Man, he's buffing everything. Again, the first creature he plays because of this guy gets bonuses. Almost like an enchantment, I guess, because the, the structures in the game cannot move. So we can go ahead and play. This guy requires 6. It requires 2 forests, which we have. And the thing about this guy, too, is you can actually only summon him on forests. So we have 2 forests over here, which is why we meet his requirements. So where you summon them actually matters, too. So actually, let's see if I can I can place these anywhere over here. If I can move this guy over here, for example, as long as I have a creature here, I can summon uh, next to my adjacent to my creature as well. So if I had this guy over here, I could have summoned things here or here. Well, actually, just here actually, or there. So I can kill this guy, and I'll still be alive with one HP. That looks pretty. That looks like the play. Actually, I, I could have moved and attacked, which might have been the play, but we didn't do that. We're going to play Death Touch over here, so we can deal with this guy, and we can we might as well play this guy. I mean, it'd be kind of far away, though, but whatever, we'll do it. And I'm going to go ahead and draw a card this turn. So the beauty is you can actually play lands, specialized lands, get extra mana, or draw a card. That gives you so many more options. I feel like there's a lot more to think about. And actually, we're seeing some very basic cards right now in this game. Because, again, I, I just did the tutorial. You put a card to draw two cards. There's a lot of complexity with some of the cards that give you different mana. Some cards require you need a forest, you need a, you need a volcano, you need desert. So some cards are going to require tri-colors, double colors. So you really have to think about where you place these cards because, again, placement is super important. So let's see. This guy has got Death Touch. We can still uh, we can move him up over here and deal with that guy. So we're actually just going to go move ahead and punch him in the face. Easy. Again, this is uh, just a, another mission, a solo mission in the game. There's a lot of these single-player missions here to get you warmed up. And then we'll play against somebody next. And, of course, since it's this card game, you can do arena runs as well, similar to Hearthstone. So we're going to just end, there's like Chronicle of RuneScape Legends has a similar system. Uh, I guess we, if we move up, we won't get that bonus anymore. But let's this guy will move up again because he moved up now. I can actually place because I have a creature in enemy territory and it's adjacent to this. I can place lands over here, whereas before I couldn't because I had no, I had none of my own lands near it. 
So moving creatures and then placing land and summoning things on top of them can be super important. So if I want to get it like this guy closer to the action, I can move this guy up over here. And because he's further moved up, I can drop this here. And then we can drop this over here. Though it's actually pretty stupid because he's just going to kill it with this. But we did it for demonstration purposes. Why not? Uh, let's go ahead and move this guy up too. And we can hit this actually because he moved up. Bam. Got him. How dare you? That's right. He's talking smack. And we'll end this turn. If you like card games though, honestly, this is worth checking out. It went free to play somewhat recently as this video. Again, animations are pretty crisp. Uh, downsides could be some of the... It might take a while to get all the cards, but that's an issue with any collectible card game. I know people were always calling Hearthstone pay to win because you have to unlock all those cards. But honestly, there was actually a guy who got Legend with just starting cards and just he played for like a couple days and got Legend. He was a pro player though. So, I mean, you can, skill and grind can get you the cards you need. And we're going to win right here. Yeah, he's very stupid over here. So he got wrecked. We're only level 2 again. As we get higher level, we can start participating in other things. Daily quest completed. So you have daily quest to grind as well. Easy. Reach level 3 to unlock this lane. So you can have multiple quests. Multiple, uh, you can unlock more solo missions as you level up. So there's over 20 hours of content for single player stuff if you want to start doing this right away. Pandora is the game's uh, arena. You can see some of these. Uh, we go to the deck builder. 30 cards per deck. You can see some of the... We won't see too many cards because I don't have them. But if you go to crafting, you can craft cards. You can see some uh, We can see some volcano cards. If we scroll down to some more complex stuff. Some of the more rare fun stuff like this guy. Uh, a random card in your hand costs 7 less. So again, there's a lot of room to make cool plays. So the cards can be pretty interesting too. I, I saw some interesting um, legendary cards being played by the AI earlier. So this guy requires you need 3 forests and 3 volcanoes. So whenever any of your creatures fight, gain plus 1 plus 1. There's a lot of room to make crazy combos and stuff too. Uh, taunt protection and the way they handle lands and mana is pretty unique i've never seen this before i mean hearthstones you just get one mana return here you get three but you can get more based on what you control let's go play against somebody else and probably get our salads toss because we're going to we're going to be getting wrecked but we'll see but with the way you place lands uh what abilities what you choose to do with either placing more lands a uh, specialty lands getting extra mana that turn or you know drawing an extra card that's kind of cool too, because you have like instead of a summoner power like you have in Hearthstone, you would just have the you have multiple options. Give you something to think about, and how you place those are important again too. And the way you place your land, you can kind of cock block your opponent, and where he can place his lands, there's always a lot of thinking going on. So it's it offers more depth to Hearthstone, and probably a lot of other card games. I still think Magic is probably. I mean, Magic was probably the most intent, most hardcore card game I've played in terms of just crazy things you can do. Uh, this has potential to uh, usurp that throne. I, mean, I, I grew up playing countless, countless thousands of hours of Magic in school, like every day and stuff. That's still my favorite card game, but this has uh, this is quite fun so far. Uh, we're going to go ahead and farm boy. He only costs one. Basically, this guy seems pretty useful for just basically putting him next to one of these wells. So we'll keep him. Uh, we're not going to have any five. We're not going to have five force anytime soon. So I don't need that guy. He seems kind of. Uh, kind of gimped though. 510 for 5, and then you have 5 forests. But then you have cards that give you extra forests. You have cards that give you random lands. There's clearly still some RNG, but I guess less RNG. Uh, we can keep this guy. He's low cost. Alright, 1 damage to opponent. That's kind of good too. We'll see who goes first. Let's see. Let's be flanking. Right, we got this, boys. We got this. So we're going to do we're gonna do some of this. We're going to drop this here and drop this here. And we're going to put our guy next to the well. So again, if you have a creature, at, it doesn't work on the first turn. Because you just placed him. I'm not going to get that bonus. However, if he has haste and I place him right there, haste means he can move or attack on the first turn. I would get that mana the second I place him. So we're good right now. Uh, gain a prairie and gain two. Man, he's basically he's going to get some nice start. What's he going to do? All right, he's going to take this as well probably. Let's see with what though. Fortune Hunter. He's got epic cards. He's got purple on there. Must be epic. Whenever this creature gains... Uh, gathers fairy, a random creature you control gains plus one plus one. Nice. Uh, not gonna do us any good right now. He'll be a four five, but I mean, let's see. I can do I can do one damage to kill this guy. It actually might be a good idea. Honestly, we're gonna we're gonna kill that guy right now before he gets out of control. Boosh, easy frags. So I'm gonna place. I can place this a little further up, but I can take this as well. You know what? We're gonna we're gonna start moving towards him because Yolo. And we're gonna place. I guess this guy will go here. Eh, YOLO, we'll put this guy here. If he plays something, we can kill it and take it, but we'll see what he does next. He still has, you know, three cards in his hand, but again, if he just pays that one, he'll draw another card. We'll see what he does, though. 
Only 30 cards per deck, though. And we'll see. What does he got? What does he got? He chose to get, uh, looks like he got extra mana. He gets six. Oh, my God. That guy's so good. Combat. Every time he fights, he draws a card. Wow. And he's got taunt. If you're adjacent to a creature with taunt, you must attack it. This is actually really good, too, for killing that. But I, I'm not going to kill it this turn. So what can I do? This guy, I'm going to keep him there. I can, I can, I can play something here, actually. It's not a bad idea. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, I can place a forest as well. But we can do... I mean, I guess I might as well place a forest because I'm only going to be able to get use out of one. Eh, we'll do this because I don't need the forest anyway. We'll put these over here in case I want to summon something else. We'll put this guy down over here. Probably a bit wasted, but it doesn't matter. And we'll end our turn. See what he does. I guess we'll both collect this. As long as this guy remains alive, I should get mana from here too. But he can, he can trade with this and kill it. So again, there's a lot more strategy than first meets the eye. And because there's so many crazy cards in the game too it really matters where you put land and your opponent will realize that as well and he'll try to counter where you place them by preventing you from putting a piece there or putting something there themselves so there's a lot of them that play opponents too just being able to think what they're doing and just counter play them and it's really great that it went free to play because honestly even though a card game looks great i'm not going to pay for it up front when you have games like hearthstone which are free to play Chronicle of RuneScape Legends, and literally everyone making these card games, even the Elder Scrolls one. There's so many card games that I feel like at this point it has to be free to play. All right, he traded with this one. This guy's still alive. Interesting. Worked out for me. He's got four mana. We'll see what he does. He got that mana again because he controlled this. So he placed, a, he placed a mountain over here, meaning he's got some card that uses that mountain. Otherwise, he would not have done that. So we're actually going to do... Uh, I do need more cards, though, as the issue. I want to summon my cards closer towards it so I can so I can wreck this guy. I'm trying to think, I can draw a card, or I can let's let's move this up here first. Because he's up here now, I can place uh, something up there. If I place it over there, I can summon this mace man a little bit closer towards him. But it's still pretty far away, so I I need more cards though. I'm gonna draw because one damage or four damage is not really gonna be enough to do anything. So I guess we'll play we'll play this. Let's place this right here. Let's see what he does. Uh, we'll move this guy. He's a 1 1. He's not going to do much fighting. We'll keep him in the back. So I am controlling these. I'll be getting more mana per turn. He's still got a shit ton of cards, though. Because again, remember, every time that guy fought, he drew a card. So he's got ways to draw cards, and I don't. My only way of drawing cards right now is using my tapping my ability. And you only get one of those every turn. So he's got a lot of cards. That's going to be an issue. Hopefully, they cost like a shit ton of mana, and he can't make too much use out of it. And of course, everything is on the left side to keep track of what, what you know, how it went down. But, I mean, it's, it's still the same framework as Hearthstone, but I feel like they tried to make a more complex game. And because it's more complex, it may not appeal to everybody, but for someone that likes card games, I feel like uh, Fairy is going to offer more depth. And Hearthstone, I loved, and I played it for a whole bunch of seasons. Uh, the seasons were kind of short in that game, too, though. But I played easily, like, 200-plus hours of Hearthstone. But uh, I enjoyed it, but it didn't hold my attention too, too long. Two damage to your opponent. So he's got this guy now. All right, all right. My turn. Uh, lost. Uh, last words. Add a random green card to your hand. It costs. Three. That's actually interesting too. I can't play it though because I need two forests. So I guess I can do. Honestly, we're gonna go ahead and move this guy up. I don't want to fight that guy. We'll move this up. I can move this down to fight him. That's actually not a bad damage. Not a bad plan. I kind of want to draw a card, but we're gonna yolo put this over there. I might as well put it. I might as well put this, and we're gonna summon this guy. Put him right there. So next turn, I can smack him with it. And this guy, if I move, I'm not going to get a control of this anymore, though. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ignore this guy. Let him do his thing. I, you know, he put him over there. He can only play them here or here because he can only place the fire guy on the mountain. So we'll see what he does. This is my first uh, game against an actual opponent. He's still out of cards. I'm scared. He does have his... Ma I, get, I get two extra mana per turn. All right, what do you play? He played... Uh, he got one more mana for that six mana. So again, you could draw a card, get that extra mana, or place land. So he chose to get extra mana. And you can see on the left, he's thinking. So what's he doing right now? Ah, uh, he ended his turn. Nice. Good for us. He got the extra... He's saving for something huge. So I guess we're going to give him the old smackaroo. That seems like the play. Uh, boosh and double boosh. So if we have one more forest, we can play this. So I guess at this point... The play right now is going to be put a forest. And because I move this card over here, I can drop a forest or any man over there. And we're going to, I guess, it seems kind of a waste to put that guy there. I want to do more damage. So we'll place it over here. 
and he's gonna take quite a bit of damage next turn. Like uh, we're gonna we're gonna dunk this guy. Uh, are we good? I don't want to put a card here because by leaving this card over here, I'm blocking from placing one over on top of his own land. If he plays the card, if I move them down here, he can place his own card over here and get that extra mana. He's got a lot of mana. I, I'm I think I got this in the bag. I mean, there are some crazy cards that I've seen that wipes out like so much damage to creatures. So he dropped his third. Oh god, there I deal three damage. No! I jinxed it, boys. I jinxed it. I knew that. Oh god, at least this guy's still alive. Deals three damage to all enemy creatures. That's so strong. But again, you need three mountains to do that. And you need to spend three turns dropping mountains because you get one mountain per turn. So that guy died too because you can move and attack in the same turn. Man, this got a lot rougher. But because I, I have my mana right next to his base, and because I have lands next to his base, I meant to say lands, not mana, I can, start some, I can summon my creatures literally next to his base and give him a lot of hell. So it's super important to kind of like defend your flanks by putting mana here. Like honestly, I should at this point drop two things over here because if he drops another land over here every turn he starts attacking me he dropped that there to get that okay this is actually these these are actually pretty decent right but the problem with these is uh they only do one damage but when they die I get cool shit so do I draw a card or do I put something over here or go and go for the YOLO I'm going for the YOLO draw that card I have a ton of men okay we got this guy a 7-7 seven, seven. I think we're good we're gonna drop that right there and it's going to have 9 damage with this guy too, but I guess we'll put him there. And uh, we're done for our turn. We're going quick, boys. We're going quick. I'm not getting that bonus mana because I lost control of these. He's getting the bonus mana now. He's got a ton of cards, so he can probably deal with these cards. We'll see what he does. Remember, he can move and attack. So he can't kill either of these right now, but he can still buff this guy up. And we'll call it after this game. There's a lot of complex cards. You got the arena runs. It, it seems pretty promising. It, it's... Seems pretty promising. Though, keep in mind, when you have so many more mechanics, like, in this game, I would say Fury is going to be a much harder game to keep balanced than a game like Hearthstone, which is a little more straightforward. Plus, there is no recognizable franchise behind Furia. These are all their own cards, whereas Hearthstone has Warcraft characters and Blizzard behind it. So the characters and franchise are more memorable in Hearthstone. However, if you're burnt out of Hearthstone and want to play a new card game, I say give Furia a try. It's pretty fun so far. All right, he had Divine Protection. Oh, he's got Death Touch over there. Thank you. All right, good thing this guy, this guy was all the way over here. Next turn, he can kill me, though, with this, because he's going to move it up and smack me. And he didn't die again because he gave it that, that divine protection. So that for one one attack, he gets shielded. All right, so he's not going to... Let's see how much that costs, though, what he plays. Safeguard, there you go. Okay, so he placed another mountain next to me. Creates two force at random. It's nice, but it's not going to do me any good. Honestly, I have to kill this guy. I, luckily for me, I can, like... I only, I only get three mana. It's actually really rough. So if I draw a card, I, I got to put this guy right here. I can't. I wish I could put him right there. It would actually be really good. Because if I control this spot too, which I can't, obviously he's got it. I would be able to cock block this guy. Because he's going to move this guy here and smack me next turn. And this is going to be rough. I got it. Do I draw? I could place a card here. And he's going to move me and kill me next turn though. I mean, what can I do? I can draw a card and hopefully something like that could help. Or I can. This is rough. This is not bad either because it costs three less. You know what? We're going for the YOLO. Give me something useful. Hard of the cards. Okay, that was uh, that was not hard of the cards worthy, but we'll put this here anyway. And we'll go ahead and smack him. That's all I can do. No need to overthink it, you know? I'm not going to be one of those guys that spends forever on their turns. Everybody hates those guys, right? I knew in Hearthstone I hated people taking forever. He's going to move forward and kill me one for one. Unfortunately, I am not going to be able to finish this guy off yet. But if he kind of ignores me and I can buff this guy to a 2-2... Damn, that death, death touch really did me in. I still think I have a chance of winning this. I'm just scared that he's got so many cards. And with so many cards, he's got so many more options. He's moving this guy back. He wants to play defense, you know? So next turn, you can move it back and trade with me over there. If this guy dies, again, I still get a bonus. With both my forest being up over there, I can put whatever card I draw in here. We want to draw a big card next turn. Uh, cost one less for each enemy. Oh, my God. Whoa, whoa. Hey, 8-8. Eight, eight. I don't want to deal with that. Oh my god. Alright, it's going to be rough. We got a yak, boys. We got a yak. It might... It's not going to be enough, though. Because 2 damage plus 2 from this is not going to be enough. We can... Um, what do I... I, I got to draw another card. We're going to go for... Or I can play this and get that one mana. I can summon both of these. But I need to keep my cards over here. Hmm. I can do... I can do... I, I might be okay, actually. We're going to put this down here. Oh, he can't attack this turn. Damn it. Uh, I can give this guy a buff. I can give him a buff. Smack him for two. And then another two next turn for four. He'll be at one. 
But this guy is going to move up and trade with me next turn. So if I buff him, it's going to be like a waste. So I'm going to hold on to it for now. And we're going to go ahead and draw. Because let's go for it. All right, that's actually really good too. Beautiful. I think next turn I might be able to win. I'll have four. I'll be able to play Rebel Slinger. Do two damage to him. And as long as this guy is alive too, all right? As long as this guy remains alive, we're going to give him a buff for three and then finish him off for five. But if he kills this guy, it's not good. He's going to move up and... I'm not sure why he gave him divine protection. Oh, he's gonna fight me, that's why. But alright. Is he gonna do one damage to me though? Is he this please don't kill him, please don't kill him, please don't kill him, please don't kill him. Keep my guy alive, keep my guy alive. I think I got it in the bag. Alright, he's got no mana. Easy game, easy life. That's right, end your turn, buddy. Go and get wrecked. Alright, oh man, we're gonna kill him. Easy. Is there like a taunt? Can I taunt him? Are there other commands? Can I say sorry? Can I apologize to him? Alright, we're gonna we're gonna play this by the book, alright? This guy's coming down. I can place him wherever. It doesn't matter. Give me that damage. We're gonna. I can kill him. You know, I'm gonna give this guy the buff too, just so he knows he got beat by more than one. I didn't have. I had more than perfect lethal. Easy game. But yeah, there's a tremendous amount of. There's more things to think about, which I like. In Hearthstone, I felt like I just draw my cards and I play what I have. And I, obviously, you still have to think about what your opponent has too. But a game like this, it's a lot harder to predict what your opponent can do because there's so many more options that they have. First one of the day, you get a bonus, and we unlock more cards. I say it's a fun game, worth checking out if you like card games. If you don't like card games, probably not watching this video, so. But yeah, if you like card games, check it out. I, I plan on playing this quite a bit more. It's it's definitely definitely different. But yeah, that's for you. Uh, check it out. If you want to learn more about it or play it yourself, check out the full review on MLS.com on the link below. Anyway, guys, later.